episode whatever. I don't even know <laughs> where we're at at this point. Um, but you look fabulous. Uh, oh, thank little, you. Little rental with some stained glass window earrings. I thought you were going to say I look granny chic. I'm, these are my grandmas. I'm channeling grandma today. I'm telling you, dude, you're becoming, chic. You're becoming that the lady. crazy old lady. Yes, you're becoming that crazy old lady. I love it. That's um, what I always wanted to grow up to be. Well, no, we're not there yet, dude. Can we... <laughs> Can we stay young for a little while? Do we have to go with stained glass windows These on are your cool. Ear? These were grandma's. They look she like they're a window me. in a church. They do. That's funny. Yep. Um, well, hey. Hey. I'm very excited. Well, a, a couple of things. I, You know, it's so funny. Oh, by the way. Welcome. welcome to the show. Steve Trevino, Captain Evil Podcast. We would like you to share. We would like you to like. We would like this podcast to grow. So please. Please help us grow this sucker. Yes. Um, and then also a big shout out to our friends at Aztec Chevrolet. And and I, like, I felt horrible, dude. Why? Well, let's tell them what happened at 1.30 in the morning two days ago. Oh. Oh my gosh, dude. I got so scared. I woke up in the middle of the night. We had a crazy so, hailstorm blow through. Yeah, so R- Renee was up with the baby in Delilah's room, and I was in our bedroom, and then all of a sudden, like, I mean, the house was shaking. It was nuts to the point I jumped out of bed and grabbed the baby out of her crib because I thought stuff was going to start coming in through the windows. I mean, it, the hail sounded like somebody was literally punching the walls and the windows. I'm surprised we don't have cracked windows. Good so to know it, we have good windows. It was golf ball size hail. And of course, Aztec Chevrolet let me drive oh. um, the Acadia Denali, right? Uh-huh. Um, which definitely, you know, it, it has the third row seating, but it's smaller than the the Yukon, but it, it whips around a little better. It's, yeah. it's a little easier to drive. But anyway, my point is, I had to call because I go outside and I'm like, oh my God, dude, all our cars. Bad, bad. All the cars. It looked like somebody had taken a ball peen hammer. All I got to say is that I'm really happy that your Polaris is parked in the garage. It's a Kawasaki mule. Dings. It is a Kawasaki mule. Okay. That's such a, <laughs> such a chick thing to do. Okay. Let's, well, I'm let's glad call you, it I'm it glad is. your mule is damage free. Yes. It was in the garage comfortably, comfortably. But your car my truck um and then i had to call i had to call aztec chevrolet and i'm like guys bad news i go oh, um your brand new uh-huh. acadia denali yes. was in a hailstorm and but you know again so cool about it i mean yeah. he, he goes he goes no worries things happen he goes and actually when i called him trevino goes um he goes you were in the hailstorm he knew. He knew Uh-oh. because he, he said that he follows um, this meteorologist uh, on his phone. Uh-huh. And it said that, you know, through uh, northern New Braunfels, San Marcos, you know. Was so gonna, he knew the call was coming. He knew he, he was hoping it wasn't coming. Yeah. But it came. And, you know, luckily for us, um, our old neighbor across the street, he does dentless uh, repair. That's his business. His yeah, repair that's his dense. business. Yeah, body shop work here in New Braunfels, and and he is the best at what he does, and he happens he's to be our neighbor. So particular. Yeah. So right away, I called him up, and he's like, "Dude, my phone is blowing up." So did he say since like five a.m. people were he's leaving like, him? Messages. People are leaving messages. He's like, "Get your truck over here now." Right. Yeah. So we took the truck over, and then I decided I don't want people to be like, "Oh my God, Steve, you're gonna take care of your truck before you take care of Renee's car." No, I am going on the road this weekend to Baltimore yes. for the first time. And I thought, okay, well, while my truck is in the shop, I will be in Baltimore anyway. Yeah. So, um, it was, dude, it was like, I, there was a, there was a moment where I got scared. Like, 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 what do we do? Cause we've never been through a bad storm in this house yet. Like, where do I, we go? I mean, What's the, the house was shaking. Yeah. Like literally shaking. And then I look outside and it is like, I mean, it's coming down. Well, it turns out it wasn't just a hailstorm. It was an actual tornado came through, not where we well, are, but very close. So then Canyon I go Lake. check in on Garrett. Garrett's sound asleep. <laughs> the kid never woke up. Like ever. never woke up. I kept going in to check on him. Yeah. Right. And I mean, it is like freaking coming down. And then me and you kind of meet up at the same time. Yeah. And we're like, uh, what do we do? And I'm, so I walk around the house and I'm like, well, so far everything seems to be 
uh, okay. Right. Right. And then I lay down back in bed and then all of a sudden the phones go off. Yeah. And it says, you know, tornado warning in your area. So I'm like, oh crap. And at one moment it sounded like there was a train, a freight train outside for a moment. Yeah. And I'm like, oh crap. Right. And then it just stopped. Which is tornado. It just stopped. Yeah. Everything just stopped. Hail stopped. The weather stopped. Crazy. And then, Texas of course, weather. yesterday. It's 80 degrees. I wake up, it's 80 degrees. There's not a cloud in the sky. It couldn't be a, a, a more beautiful day. Yeah. Right? And, and then you got annoyed because, you know, and. and I, I got know, it. Why did I get annoyed? Maybe we need to backtrack a little bit. Um, oh, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about, it was, it was you know, that last week's episode. I thought it was the worst episode. Oh, we've that's ever... so funny. I know. Cause we were all over the place with our thoughts, right? And the table and everything and people loved it. You know what it was though? We filmed in the afternoon and Rick, I think there's a different energy when we film in the afternoon because we're like rushing around all day and then we run in here and we're like, okay, time to go. Well, I, I was... think we're just in a different headspace well, in the I, afternoon. I thought it was bad because I was stressed. I wasn't feeling, well, I had, I, I was, I always get bummed out when I'm taken away from my work. You know, I yeah. was really focused on cutting the yard, trimming trees, but that raking was, leaves. But that was busy was, work to keep your mind off of the fact that you were filming a special last weekend. No, but I, there's no busy work for me. I stay busy all the time, every day. Yeah, but, but, but it's because you so, have all that anxious energy. It, it, so, because, because I'm always outside. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, neighbors will come by and say hi. And I'm so annoyed with them because they what took me, they made me stop working. Oh, that's like they want to say hi. Like, and I feel <laughs> bad because I, I want to see them too. But I'm like, dude, like, uh, you know, yesterday there's a ladder in the tree uh -huh. and I'm cleaning off that big tree where the swing is. Uh -huh. And uh, a neighbor comes walking over to talk to me about hail damage. And I'm like, dude, like I'm, I got branches on the floor. Yeah. I, I, I'm like, I got things to do. You know, but it was, it was cracking me up yesterday because sometimes you get so annoyed with me that I don't come inside. Well, yeah. Cause there's like a baby in the house. You know what I feel like, like, like it's going to happen. The world is returning back to normal and I have faith that the road schedule is going to get crazy again. And you would, you will not have taken advantage of the time that you were home to just be inside with your family. No, I want... Why don't you come outside with your family? <laughs> That's I, what I mean. Because I have Delilah. And, 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 and by the way, like, dude, she, so I'm out there working. And, and, and you know, it's so funny to me because I always feel like people, if, they're, if their husband is an inside type, uh, they, they, they want, want him outside. <laughs> I think there's probably some truth right? to that. Like, yes. it, like, yeah, like yeah. if their husband is the... I don't do any yard work. I stay inside. They're so annoyed. That I just want to hang out with my done. family. Yeah. They're always like, get yeah. outside, do something, right? Build me a shelf. Go do, right? Go do something. Yeah. And then you're annoyed that I'm outside. You're like, get in here. Can you no, slow down? You know, you know what it is? It's when like the last couple of weekends that you've been on the road and we've stayed behind and it's just me, Garrett and Delilah on the weekends. I've got all the kids upstairs, not all the kids, the two, I've got the two kids upstairs in the playroom and I play with Garrett while she's sitting there between my legs and I pretend like she's playing with us too and I give her a little toy in her hand, you know? So that we, even though there's such a huge age gap between them, that we're like doing stuff together as a family and we just haven't had that moment, to you, all of me, us. Garrett, and, I understand and Delilah. That. And, That's and, all. And we'll talk about that here in a minute, but I also want you to know that when I leave on the road, yeah. I want my house to be perfect for you. I, You know, you know me, I'm cleaning, I'm mopping, I'm making sure that the yard is cut. Cause I'm, I'm telling you right now, ain't nobody going to catch me sleeping. You know, your parents aren't going to come over here. My parents aren't going to come over here and go, look, Steve didn't do the yard. Steve didn't cut the yard. <laughs> Cause you Steve, know, your dad or Steve, my dad will make a comment no, for sure. <laughs> no, no, no. I want, but, but then I also know that my dad and your dad are the type that they'll do it. Yeah, they will. Right. They'll yeah. end up doing it. So when people come to my home, our home, yeah. I want things to be perfect yeah and done and clean and things in their place and the yard looks amazing yeah you know so uh you know my goal as a dad is to make sure that that when i do go on the road there is nothing for you to do other than spend time with your kids yeah that's my goal right and i take that goal you know me i take it very seriously yeah. 
And I want to make sure that, and, and it's funny because, you know, I was outside uh, uh, on the ladder, on the trees and you come out and you, you, you give this like, <laughs> like you've got, you've got like Delilah in your hand and you're like, and I go, I go, I go, what? Cause I know your, I know your looks, right? Yes. I know your face. Okay. I'm like, what's up? And you're like, well, can you come inside? <laughs> can you come inside? I don't speak like that. Yes, you did. And then my thing is like, I don't know. Can you bring a glass of water? <laughs> Like, I am in 80 degrees on a tree. I have sawdust everywhere. Chainsaw you're, dust You're right. I everywhere. mean, well, I could give a shit less that you're trimming trees. You're totally right. I'm like, can you come out? And, and then I come inside and you got a nice glass. <laughs> Ice. You, you got you, your... Is this mine? Yeah, I guess so. Yep. It's I go, yours. can I have some? <laughs> I go, can I have some? And you were like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, maybe bring that out to your husband. Uh, your husband's out there sweating working oh. on the house making it nice and then i get <sighs> and then well no you don't get a huh you get i'm dealing with a screaming crying baby because we have legit just gone from colic to teething no and then yes we have and we'll talk about we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about delilah but and then and then you come out and you go well can you at least play with your son <laughs> and and first of all garrett was helping me with the branches i had garrett Garrett brought in the trash, which is his normal Tuesday job. Yeah. And then while I was cutting the branches, I had Garrett removing the branches and taking them to the backyard. So I already had a plan and Garrett needs to learn that when, you know, life is not all about just play. Life is sure. not all about. Sure. No, I'm glad you know, he, I so, didn't realize he was helping you. He'd been inside yes. with me and we'd been playing and I didn't want him to get on technology. So no, I was trying I, to keep him occupied. I put him to work. And Which then, is great. And then afterwards, as you know, me and Garrett always play baseball. Yeah. We wrap the day up with me and him playing catch. Yeah. We work on his hitting. We work on his fielding. Right? So I already had a plan. And then you're out there. Can you at least play with Garrett? <laughs> and then my plan got ruined because the neighbor came over and killed 30 minutes of time. And I'm over here trying... To get my job done. But, you know, I do enjoy talking to the neighbors. So I don't want to yeah. sound like I, I don't. But um, but it was funny. You love to visit. You say I'm turning into a little old lady. You're like a little old lady. You love to, like, visit and chit-chat. A little old lady? <laughs> Can I be a little old man? Why do yes, I gotta, I'm sorry. <laughs> why do I got to be a little old lady? You're like a little old man. You love to chit-chat and know the scoop and share the scoop. And no, no I, I like people. I, I like people. I'm interested in people. Um, and, and I also have to remind myself that because I do get to the point where all I do is work, yeah, I do have to tell myself, Hey, take a second. Yeah. You know, take a second to make friends, Steve, you, you, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I, you know, look, I can be, you know, as you know, I, I can be in the yard all day, you know, cleaning the garage, edging, cutting the yard, making the trees better. Keep him busy. Keep him busy. You know, um, blowing things i like to blow things as uh -huh. we talked about yeah. um but yes we are we are we we felt like we were getting to a point where and we are that delilah was becoming a very happy baby right you know? we've sort of figured out the formula situation we're adding the rice cereal she's, she's smiling more yeah she's she's cuddling with her daddy more you yeah. know which was great and, um, all of a sudden run and I'm, I'm all confident, right? I'm like, oh yeah, I got this right. I, I, I got, this. and, and, to, and, you know, to be completely candid on this podcast, like we have been, it has been very heartbreaking for me. I, I feel like I have not because of the colic, because of, um, Delilah, just not comfortable, you know, yeah. and, and she has definitely found comfort in your arms. She's definitely found comfort comfort with you. Yeah. And and it sucks, man. And and you know, I'll have her and she's happy for two minutes. And then she starts screaming her head off. And then I stand up, I walk with her, I, I change her diaper, I, I I do whatever I can to hopefully make her comfortable. Make her comfortable and save the situation. And then finally you come over, I hand her to you, and immediately she stops crying. So it's it really is kind of heartbreaking for me yeah so lately that she has been feeling better 
I have tried to get more involved and, and okay, well, like she's a happy baby and she's feeling better and she's smiling and, you know, and we are learning that, that, you know, you lay her down, she's happy for three minutes and then she goes, ah, ah. <laughs> She and does then, this weird like ha yeah. thing and it's like half laugh, half cry yeah, just to like, like see hey, what reaction hey, she's going to get out of you. I want another different <laughs> position, right? So then we move her, we sit her up in the bumbo, right? Yeah. And then she's happy for another five minutes. 10 and then, minutes is her limit. And so then she's 10 like, minutes ah, each. and then she wants tummy time. So, yeah. you know, we kind of learned that. So then you, you had to run an errand and I was like, okay, you know what? I go, why don't you leave her with me? Right. I'd fed her. I'd burped her. I was playing with her with a little toy. She seemed engaged with the toys. And, and it we was like, let's transfer. It was great because remember me, Garrett, and her were cuddling on the on the sofa. How long did that last? It it, last, it was good. It was it was probably like five or six minutes. You know, there where she was engaged. She with was the engaged. Toy? She was hanging out. She's playing with her toy, and I'm thinking to myself, dude, I got this. Like this is awesome, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, man, she loses her shit and. I take her upstairs. I, I change her. I, I bounce her on the ball. I mean, I, I did everything I could, man. And she's just literally screaming her head off. And, and it was so heartbreaking for me. And, yeah. and, you know, I'm trying my very, very best. I mean, I'm laying her down. I'm walking up and down the steps. I mean, I'm doing everything I can. You call me and you're like, get home. I go, please get home. I go, please uh, you know, I'm having a hard time and, and she just won't calm down. And, and by the time you, you got there, by the time you got home, you were able to get her. And, and, and even then, even with you, she was having a hard time, Yeah. you know, and then it was one of those well, moments. Well, no, she ended up passing out in your arm. When I got home, I went upstairs and you were with her in the rocking chair and she had passed out in your arm. She was asleep. Oh, that's right. That's right. But yeah. I like, I scooped her up. I was, I was rocking her, her in the, in the chair and she finally fell asleep when you got home. And, and there was a moment where like, oh crap, is it, is it colic time again? Is she not a hundred percent better? Right. And then you were like, no, she's just tired. And then yesterday, what did we find? She is teething. She's budding a little too. So I was like, you felt, you thought it was something you did. So I, right away, when I figured out what was going on, I said, it was not you yesterday. She freaked out on you oh, yesterday. Oh, because, because then she was teeth. freaking out with you and you were like, <laughs> oh, Steve C, it's not you. Because it can't be me. There's no way it's me. It's got to be. Um, so we went from a nine month hard pregnancy <laughs> to a three month colicky baby to now teething yeah so awesome no but you realize this is why people say babies are hard babies are just hard they're these little human beings and they're hard they are hard and and um on top of all of that you know Rick, did you have a question yeah <laughs> oh, yeah, to believe the me. pain she's yeah. put us through. <laughs> well, well, you know, I, I always think about that too, Rick, because it's like Garrett, you know, and, and I know not to be morbid, but, you know, I wish I had videos of my dad. I wish I had, you know, conversations that my mom and dad had or my stepmom and dad had or my yeah. mom, you know, and I, I just think it's really cool that, that Garrett will always have and Delilah will always have you know, these conversations, you know, our funeral is going to be the longest highlight video <laughs> of all time. Like, <laughs> um, but, but no, it, I, I'm glad you said that Rick. Cause it's, it, you know, this podcast is definitely a weekly soap opera yeah. of our lives. But you know what too, everyone to like put it into perspective Wes Rick says that too. It's like, we talk about every week about like, Oh my God, now this, now this, when I talk to other moms, they're like, even yesterday with, with Kira, our friend who has the dentless repair or paintless repair, um, she was saying like, yes, it's so hard when you're in it. And then, then it's over. Yeah, no, and, and we have to remember to try to stay patient, which we're trying to do, right? And, and, oh, and, when she and, cries because her oh. teeth, her little lip quivers, and then yesterday... She you throws her arms out, <laughs> and it's just like, Stop, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it's heartbreaking, and, it, it and it's... And I, I got to say, man, Garrett has been so patient and so sweet yeah. and so helpful, and, you know, it makes me so happy that, that Garrett, you know, I don't know if we could have done it with a different kid. 
you know, yeah. G- Garrett is... The age gap helps and the understanding helps. But this is also why I wanted him to have a sibling. You know, this is why I wanted to have a second one so badly is because Garrett very much had only child syndrome and very much Renee, the center of our universe. You have two, and think, you have two siblings <laughs> and somehow you have I only have child only syndrome. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You have two other siblings and for uh, somehow, some way, you're the only one that matters. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> Um, no, but I also think it's good for Garrett to experience. No, this. no. I, look, I think I think it's absolutely good um, for Garrett, and it is definitely a lot um, harder. But there is moments where I look at this little girl, and she's stunning, and she's beautiful, and she's and any any. Parent, I just feel bad anytime you say something positive about her. It's about her looks. No, no. <laughs> Have no, you I, noticed I, that? I, can I finish? <laughs> Can I finish? Yes. And she's super playful and she has she does these have huge, a little personality. She has these huge smiles. Yeah. Right. And she makes eye contact with you and laughs, you know, yeah. and you can tickle her. So, you know, it, it is, it is definitely. Who was it? We had another little kid over and he was like, it's like, she's looking in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> but she is definitely um, a blessing and, and we're so happy. And, and I know that she is going to make our family better. Yeah. She's going to make our family stronger, you know, and, and to all the parents out there. She's going to challenge the shit out of us. <laughs> well, you know, look, I joke about spoiling her. We're going to have to be disciplined with her, man. Cause yeah. you know, you give her an inch. She's like her mom. She'll take a mile. Oh, I don't think so, spoiling her is going to be the issue. I think she's going to be feisty as all hell. Um, yeah, I think she's going to be a, a little scrapper, a little but we, we, we had such a crazy week. I was going to say, are we week. even going to talk about it? Rick? I feel like he's trying to avoid talking about it. We filmed a special this weekend. Are we going to talk about that? Well, no, not, not only do we, do we film a special? I did, um, three interviews, you know, where we're doing these really cool interviews with, with athletes. I was going to say, with Rick had a hell of a and, week too. Cause he had oh to edit God, that dude, too. Rick, you know, Rick's been, been, you know, so crazy as well. We you know, love you, Rick. Pr- producing the show, getting things ready. You know, us filming. We we filmed with um, uh, a couple, uh, a UFC fighter. We filmed with a sportscaster. We filmed with uh, Mario Lopez. So you didn't explain. Steve's doing a series of interviews. It's called Sports, Marriage, and Comedy? Sports, Marriage, and Comedy. You know, and, and you know, we've been able to wrangle up some really cool interviews. Yeah. You know, um, so not only... Did we have to do the podcast, prepare for the show, um, do these three interviews that took up an entire day? Yeah. Then I Four interviews. You did four. Oh, no. Th- three. You did three. You did yeah. three. And then Thursday. So Waco from New Braunfels is, is about two hours. Yeah. Roughly. 2.15. And Thursday, I drove up to Waco. Yeah. Did the show. Drove back. Yes. Friday, I woke up. Um, did what I did the interviews, knocked out all those all interviews day. and to the last minute, like, you know, Mario Lopez, you know, because he's Mario Lopez, it kept turning into, he well, was on set and he's they were on like set scheduling and then, well, conflict. Well, Steve, he can be you in, with you in five minutes. And then, right. well, Steve, he can be with you in 10 minutes. So I, you know, here I am waiting for, yeah. For and Mario also Lopez. knowing like you got to get in the car by a certain time or you're not going to make your show. Well then, I mean, first of all, thank you, Mario Lopez for doing the interview, but he was tired. Like you could tell that that he came to the interview and he was just like worn out and he just really wasn't giving me, you know, a lot yeah. of energy. But but I also understand how how busy he is, you know. So yeah. that interview will be coming soon. We're we're working on the edit on that. But li- so then I'm you know I got to get Friday night. I got to get to Waco. It's getting very very close to I'm not gonna make it by showtime. Yeah. So we haul ass Friday and then we decide. Um, and you were already there. No, I didn't. Well, I didn't go with you on Thursday. Friday. We That's what we're all, talking about. We're talking yeah, about Friday. Friday, we all went up together. Didn't we? No. We went separately on Friday. I think so. You had no, to get No, no, no. We went. <laughs> Look, it's like such a blur. We don't even remember. I know. I don't know how we got there on Friday. But I know that I, me and Delilah and behind the scenes Betty stayed on Friday night. That's what and I mean. you drove back. Well, and then the reason being is because Garrett had a Little League game um, Saturday at 1 o'clock. That you were dead set on being at and coaching. and You have to. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I had, and, that, and oh, that's very important to show Garrett that, hey, 
we have to sacrifice sometimes. Yeah. And we made a commitment. You know, I made a commitment to the team to to coach uh, the team. Yeah. Uh, you know, along with Travis and and Daniel, and which, by the way, all you parents out there, little league coaching is free. Volunteer, help out, get involved. You know, and if you don't get involved. Don't sit there and, and ask, you know, well, why, you know, why are you coaching this way? Or you, you don't, you don't get to ask that. <laughs> you don't get to ask that. You don't get to ask why a coach is doing something unless you volunteer. It takes a lot coach. of patience to be a little league coach. It does. And, and to be the mom in the dugout with all those boys. That takes a lot of patience. Oh, too. Aiden's mom's amazing. Yeah. And, and she's so sweet with all the boys and yeah. she helps. But, but I wanted to show Garrett that, you know, no matter what, you have to make your commitments. Yeah. And if that means that I've got to drive two hours to Waco, do a show for an hour and a half, have meetings about the show, right. turn around and drive two hours back yeah. to then wake up and go to your Little League game. And it's such a team effort, too, because Betty's with me and Delilah in Waco. Grandma Dora's here with you in New Braunfels Ms. to Dora, help get yeah. Garrett out the door. And we did. And we, we, we made it to the game. And it was an awesome game. But I, I got to tell you. I am a, I'm definitely a, we should count the outs. Kids should learn to oh, be out. Yeah. I also think that kids should learn that, you know, not everybody gets a trophy. I'm that guy, right? I think that these are hard lessons that, that kids need to yeah. learn, right? Well, it's so funny because, you know, a lot of them have been playing for a couple of years now on either different leagues and they haven't been counting outs. And well, so this is the first time they're like learning what an out no, is. No, no, no. We, we decided as a team that we were going to start doing that. Yeah, but what sucks is when our team decides they're going to do that and the other team has not decided they're going to do that. So those kids just keep running the bases. Our kids are like, what the hell? But it doesn't matter. It, 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 my kid is not those kids, right? No, I, so, I hear you. I'm so just saying that makes it worse. We decided that we are going to work on getting outs, right? Getting the other team out. Yeah. And we're also going to work on, hey, you got out. Right. Right. And it's a, it's an important lesson to my kid, especially and other kids that, Hey, you're going to get out. Right. Yeah. Dude, our kids were so good. I mean, and, and I don't know the other team. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know the dads and I don't know the kids, but you know, we were getting them out and I mean, we were, and we were hitting the ball into the outfield. I felt bad. Like I felt bad for the other kids. Because when I tell you that we were 10 times better than those kids. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, it was, it was tough. You know, it was tough to. Well, it might've just been this week because I know like one of the first or second games that we missed because we got, we were stuck in Florida or whatever. There was a team that like beat us to smithereens. Well, and then Garrett, Garrett rips one, dude. You know, Garrett hits the ball so well, right? Yeah. Garrett rips one down the first base line, rips it in uh -huh. the air. It's in the air all the way to first, and the first baseman catches it. Good for him. And everybody went nuts, right? Because it was like impressive wow, that he right? caught it. Yeah. So Garrett runs to first, and I'm like, nah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're out, bro. And he's like, what? I'm like, you're out. He caught it. That's an out. Go sit in the dugout, right? And he dude. gets his little you know, pouty eyes and, uh -huh. and you know, what, that's his what, face. What exactly. That's, yeah. that's funny. What, if I see you make the face what, and it's him. What do you mean? I'm out. I'm like, bro, you are out. Yeah. Right. So he sits in the dugout. He comes back out and he, he gets out there and I'm like, what's your problem, man? And his head's down. He goes, I got out. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's part of the game. And that's part of life. Pick your head up. Yeah. You know, and I always try to teach him that, right. I always try to teach him, Hey, have a short memory, right? Yeah. Don't dwell on the out. I always tell him do better, right? I never yeah. get I never get mad at him when when he makes a bad catch, or misses a ball, or, or or does a bad throw. I merely go fix it. Right. Next play, fix it. Right to the point right. when he knows, like he knows he can fix it. He'll even yeah. go like when he makes a mistake, not just in baseball, but even at home. I'll fix it. He says, I'll fix it. Right. And so I told him, I go, cheer up. I go, and next time you go up to bat, rip it. Right? Uh -huh. Dude, I'm not kidding you, man. He freaking. It went a fire under his ass. Dude, it, he rips it over the shortstop into the outfield, and it almost rolls 
like to the out, away in the outfield. Yeah. And Garrett looks at me like, and I'm like, there you oh. go, buddy. And then the next time he hit big hit, we get in the car, we haul ass to meet you. Cause you've been at the venue at this point. I went to the venue. Since I checked in with 11. Rick and Gigi were there all day. I just, they got there earlier. I went, I checked in with them just to kind of see where things were at. And left well, and then I was in a situation where in my head, I was like, oh, I'll go to the hotel. And then you called me and you're like, oh, no, no, no. You got to go it's to the venue. It's showtime. Yeah. And I go, I got a shower. Like I've been coaching Little League all yeah. morning. And you're like, there's a shower at the venue. Right. Right. So I get to the venue. I shower. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how get, clean that shower was, but there was a shower. I don't even get to see. <laughs> I don't even get to see the hotel room. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I went straight to the venue. Yeah. You know, and then we're there. Everybody's setting up, you know, and, 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 and that's the, the you know, I, I feel like the team that we have, you included, I, I don't have to worry about Rick's team. Right. And Terry's team. Oh yeah. And I don't have to worry about Sean Simler and, you know, will the sound guy, everybody knows to do, everybody's doing their job. Total pros. Total pros. You, yeah. you included. So I'm kind of there, you know, just kind of watching everything and, and making sure that, that things are cool. Now what was really special. So little Joe Grammy award winning little okay, Joe. So you got to explain to people who little Joe is. Cause so, you, I did not know him as well as you did. So L little Joe is a, a, he's almost hard to explain because he, he sung Spanish, um, some of his songs. He was the first person that was singing in Spanish and English. Like a song would have Spanish and English. I, in and it. that was you when? Know. What years was that in? Because that's what's crazy is that he God, was, that was in the, that long That ago. was in the late 70s. You know, because the man's 80 years old. Yeah. You know, late 70s, early 80s. And, and it was to the point here in Texas where everybody would go see Little Joe. Yeah. Because he was a jazz musician, because he was into jazz, because he was into country music, because he was into, um, you know, he, I mean, just for an example, he was best friends with, is best friends uh -huh. with Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson so and him. He's got so many great stories. Are, are best friends. Yeah. And, and he's, a, he's an icon. He's a legend. And, and, you know, I always admired him for, you know, to, to me, he was, he was very much what, what I am. Right. Yeah. You know, I like, um, uh, Tejano music and mariachi music, but I also like rock and roll and I like Texas country music and I like country music and I, you know, yeah. and, and mainly I listen to country music, my, you know, myself and, and classic rock and, yeah. you know, so little Joe embodied to me what, what it is to be a Texan, right. Is, is especially a, 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 a Tex-Mex guy, right. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that, you know, I, I growing up, I was friends with the Willie Nelson's. You know, and mm -hmm. they were friends with me, you know, and, you know, Vance Dawson and all the guys from home, you know, they, you listen to, they listen to Spanish music, right? Right. Because it was at the weddings and the, and the parties and, you know. Yeah. He's so, the epitome of like Tex-Mex, so Tex being a Mexican American. You know, yeah. and a Grammy winner. And then I'm talking to the guy and, and he's explaining to me at 80 years old, he gets there and I go, I go, what do you want? What do you need? Right. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, I knew this was going to happen. He goes, I'll have a glass of wine, right? <laughs> so, he is so sprightly. He's like this little, he's a petite man. He's little man. Joe. Yeah, he's a petite man, but he is so sprightly and springy. And So he gets, you know, he gets a glass of wine and, and you know, we had gotten these, uh, these weed pins, right? And I know because he's friends with Willie Nelson, <laughs> right? That he likes, he likes the ganja, uh -huh. right? So I have this weed pin and it's called Grape Ape. And I go, uh, I go, hey man, I go, you want some of this? He goes, Oh, and he, like, <laughs> did he, he save that for yeah, later. He, he put it in his pocket. He's like, "Thank you, right?" Um, but but immediately, not only did he show up by himself, no entourage, by That's himself. That's what was crazy. He just kind of sauntered in. But but his humility, and and how sweet he was, and he gave so a, happy to be there. He took a picture with everybody. He did, you know. And and I told him, I said. I said, little Joe, I said, thank you for coming. He goes, no, thank you for involving me. He goes, I see your stand up. I see what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. He goes, and I'm just so happy to be here. So we ended up doing an interview on stage with little Joe. Yeah. And then Garrett had his little outfit and he was ready to sing. Mm -hmm. So after, you know, and I, my thing was like, okay, well, let little Joe rest, right? We still have an hour and a half 
or an hour before we shoot. Let him rest. Let him do his thing. Yeah. And Garrett goes on stage and starts singing. And then little Joe grabs a microphone and walks on stage. Uh-huh. And me and little Joe and, and, and watch Garrett sing Piano Man uh-huh. and sing George Strait and Garrett singing American Pie. Yeah. And, you know, to me, and I don't know how the audience felt, but, but I really had a, a, a moment in my life. Yeah. That I could not believe I was there. I couldn't believe that we were at my show and that little Joe was on stage with me and that my son Garrett was on stage singing and my wife was directing and the people that I care about who are my friends were producing. And and it, I just had this moment where I really wished I could show everybody my heart, you know, and, oh. and so they could see how much I think I appreciated everything, you know. I think I think people felt it. I think this oh. that first show, that audience had such a great energy because you are you are so relatable, and I think it it just created the vibe for that show for the night. It you was, know. Um, People felt like they were in on something, like they were at our family reunion or something. Like, like it was the venue was called the backyard. It was like they were at our backyard barbecue, almost was, just um, hanging out. You know, and, and and one of my best friends, you know, Sean Simler, you know, he was part of it. And, and Sean and I would 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 go, man, one day we're gonna work on a show together, right? Because Sean is a a lighting guy. He does lights for years and, and years, amazing. For years from big shows. Oh yeah, he worked with Miranda Lambert. He worked with Kevin Fowler. He works now with with Granger Smith, you know, and, and we, we had always talked about us being able to do a show together and and we did. And and it was just a really special moment, you know, and, and I, I, and Sean went over and above. We were so lucky to have him. Oh, Sean was was amazing. amazing. And and I just, I, 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 for the first time, I've never been nervous to walk on stage ever. Yeah. Walking on stage for me is so easy, you know, and, and I love being on stage and, And my material in my head is so easy. Like I know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. For the first time I walked up there and the crowd went nuts and everything was perfect. And I, and I just, I felt so nervous and I stumbled through for, through the first few jokes, you know, which I yeah. never do. Yeah. I never stumble through material. Right. Yeah. But in my head, I just kept thinking about that moment with Garrett on stage with, with little Joe, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, everything was perfect. I mean, and it wasn't cold. It was comfortable. Yeah. And the, the, and the venue, the backyard in Waco. Oh my gosh. They went out of their way. They were anything. We said, can we change that? Can we change this? Like they never made it. They probably were very annoyed, but they never made us feel that way. And they were happy to make all the changes. And the green room was fun, you know, and, and, you know, and Jeff and Don, like, you know, sometimes I feel like, like we take Jeff and Don for granted because they're just always there and they're there for us. And they're, they're some of our good friends from California you know, and they, I think they come out for all the specials and yeah, well, they're, well, they're originally from Texas, but they lived in, I mean, they, they just, you know, having them there and my mom backstage and, and my aunt and I mean, just, you know, the green room had a good energy to it and, yeah. and you know, little Joe hanging out and taking pictures and it was just, It was such a beautiful evening. Oh my God. Can we talk about how, so you, Steve filmed an interview with little Joe before the show and Garrett sang like we talked about, but then little little Joe actually introduces you, which is why we asked him to come in the first place. Right. He did a full on stand up comedy routine. Oh my God, dude, he was hilarious. I didn't know he was going to do a set. And then, you know, jokingly, cause, cause little Joe and and I'm back there with Chris Alvarez and and little Joe goes, uh, well, 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 what do I say? I go, I go, well, first of all, you can say whatever you want. I go, I go, you're little Joe. I go, but, but I go, please don't call me Lee Trevino. Right. And then I go, I go, cause you're going to go up there and you're going to go Lee Trevino. Yeah. Right. And then you're going to go Rick Trevino. Right? <laughs> All these other famous yeah. Trevinos. All these other Trevinos. Here. And then, uh, you know, I had no idea that he was going to walk on stage and do that joke. He goes, I just, and, and his timing yeah. And his setup, yes. like he set it up. No, he had a set, and yeah. I like I didn't ask him. I want to know: Did he like prepare that, or do you think that was just like he was in the mood? He was there. He's like, like no, dude, he's just a, char- a charismatic guy. And then he goes, uh, one of his jokes, and spoiler alert: I don't, I don't even know if we're going to use it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But he walks on stage and he goes, you know, Steve came up to me and he goes, you know, little Joe, I'm a huge fan. I love that song that you sing, "Wasted Days and Wasted Nights." He goes, Hey, Steve, that's Freddie Fender, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> He goes, he goes, and then Steve told me, 
well, yeah, can you play Wasted Days or Wasted Nights? And, and he goes, well, yeah, I can play Wasted Days and Wasted Nights. Do you want me to play it? And Steve looked at me and said, yeah, both of them. <laughs> and it's one song, yeah. right? Um, but but he was he was so funny and so charismatic, and and it was just a. We're gonna have to do that in special features or something. We'll have something. to release it, that because he was somehow. so charismatic yeah. and so, yeah, yeah, and, and it makes you realize, you know, what a talent he is, right? To be able to go up there and get legitimate laughs, yeah. and be comfortable on stage without a guitar, yeah, without singing his songs. It, that kind of reminds know. me of Dolly Parton too. She has that. She can go on stage and just blab and chat and oh, make yeah. silly jokes. Well, and, and that was the, the really cool thing is there was a moment where me and Chris and little Joe were talking. And I mean, he's telling me stories about Willie Nelson moving in with him uh-huh. because the IRS had confiscated confiscated that, that word <laughs> confiscated <laughs> everything. And Willie Nelson ends up moving with little Joe. Yeah. Now the sad part about that is months earlier little joe this part of the story i did not know crazy. that was heartbreaking can little you imagine little joe and willie nelson in willie's house decide that they're going to do a spanish album for willie willie was singing in spanish and yeah. they filmed they recorded an entire album of willie singing in spanish and little joe singing in english so cool and then because the irs came Took they everything. seized everything, even all the masters that were in Willie's home. His so, masters. So that album has never seen the light of day. Has never seen the light of day. Yeah. And it was just one of those moments where you're like, here's a moment in history. Here's something that 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 could have really, you know, maybe put little Joe on a Willie Nelson level where everybody knows who he is. Right. right? Defined crossover in a different crossover, way. the yeah. whole thing. And, and it's, and it's, it's gone, you know, and it, it was just one of those moments where you go, wow. And then to hear these stories from him, right. Yeah. It was just awesome. And, and the, he's a great storyteller. I mean, it makes sense, right? He, he sings songs. He writes songs, oh, yeah, but yeah. like even spoken word, he's a great storyteller, but you know, the, and I think we, we had a good set and, you know, I think you always do that to yourself. No, you had, you had a great set. You know what it is? You've been doing this material for so long. I think we probably talked about it on the podcast, but you were doing this pre COVID and ready to tape it. Right. So it's just, so to come back to it, one, I think you don't realize how comfortable and how great and how strong all that material was. It was great. And and I can't wait for people to TikTok it. And I can't wait for people to share it. And and again, and ad- I can't. I'm so happy the uh, the truck joke has been filmed and is. I might put still to do bed. it just to Me put in your face. Me wrecking the truck. I don't have to relive um, it every live show. But but you know, I'm I'm very I'm, I am proud of it. And you know, but it is nerve wracking. You know, and, and because again, we filmed this on our own. Yeah. Again, we did this. By ourselves. I'm, when you don't mean you and I, we have Texas. No, no, right. We have a family of a great What I'm team. saying is, is we did this without having, you know, a, a network involved. Right. We did this without, um, network money. Right. We did this without, um, the mainstream media. We did this on our own. Yeah. So now, you know, not only has Rick and his team risked their right. time and money, Like you said, we have our friends going to bat for us. We have our friends all going to bat and believing in what we do. And, and, but we also know that we have you, we have all the people who continue to share our stuff. And, and we truly, truly would not have a career without the people who support uh, uh, what we do. Yeah. And we we're counting on you guys. And we're counting on the fact that even if we don't end up on a big streaming network or a big network, we're counting on the fact that. You love what we do. We're going to put it out there and you guys are going to share it. Oh, and it looks you know? so beautiful the way Sean lit it up and the shots that Texas crew did. I'm really excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for it to all come together. Well, and, and you know me and, and I'm not, I'm not a very um, picky person. I really believe that, you know, the people that are around me are great at what they do. So I don't really get involved, but there was a moment, you know, Rick comes up to me and he shows me this shot from the back and it was okay. dark back there. And I'm like, uh, you know, what can we do about that? Yeah. Right. And Rick's like, man, you know, it's, it's showtime. Like we're, we're here, right. you know? And I'm like, man, I, 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 I just really would love to see, you know, the lights on the trees back there. And, and, you know, Rick goes, well, you know, well, and then Sean comes walking over and he's like, what's the problem? 
And I go, well, I go, we have this dead spot back there. Can we make it look good? Yeah. What? 15 minutes later, done deal. Yeah. Rick, Sean lights moves it up. Move things around. Yeah. yeah move things You're around. Like, we don't have extra lights to bring in, but we can move some things yeah, around. Yeah, we move things around. But, you know, all the people that bought a ticket, all the people that came to the show, it, it, to me, it was, it was a very, very special night. And, and not that the yeah. other specials were not special to me. Uh, there was something about this special that I was more in it. What do you mean? Like how so? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I, I finally had the confidence to enjoy it. You know, because the other the other specials, it's a panic, and it it, it was a a oh my god, you know, all this is happening right now, yeah. and things are crazy, and you know. But you know what? <sighs> I I think at least for me, from my perspective, what contributed to that was the fact that your other specials like till death is beautiful and as amazing as it was, we had Saturday and that was it. We got into yeah. the venue Saturday morning. We had to set it all up before showtime. We didn't really have trial runs. It turned 30 degrees. <laughs> it dropped 40 degrees in one day. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with this one, you were in the space on Thursday. We were in the space on Friday, carpets going down, platforms going up, you know, so we, we were able to test things out Friday night as far as what the lights are going to look yeah, we, like. We, we felt like we had a little more leeway, I guess. Yeah. And, it and, gave us some breathing room. Come and, Saturday, Rick was like, we're in a really good space. He's like, I know yeah. I'm here at 11, but and, and by the way, poor, poor, dude, poor Rick, like at the end of the night, like he's like, he's like waddling cause he's in pain from being in the, on his feet All day. from yeah. literally, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning to now it's two o'clock. Yeah. Right. And then I was just so ready to have a drink. Yeah. Like afterwards, I'm like, I'm, I'm having a drink. Like yeah. I am drinking. I got my, and by the way, I gave everybody a bottle of crown uh -huh. as a gift. Yeah. And I don't get to drink any of it. No, at the end of the night, you're like, I need another bottle. <laughs> I'm like, I need some crown <laughs> Royal. And, the, and, but that was fun too, because me and you, um, and you sucked it up cause you were tired, but me yeah. and you got to hang out and me and you got to walk around and me and you got to kind of, um, enjoy the evening together. Visit with people. Yeah. You know, visit, yeah. visit with people. Um, and then it was over and that was it. And I, I definitely feel like there's a, a, um, pressure lifted off. Yeah. You know, so now I'm going to be in, in Baltimore. I was going to say, you. so um, one, you've never been to Baltimore, but usually once you film a set, you dump it and you start all over again. I don't, I don't, I don't dump it completely. You know, what I try to do transition is I try it. to transition out of it and I start trying to, um, you know, write the next special, you know, and, and what is that going to be? You right. know, so uh, I never know. I, I will say that after I filmed Till Death, I already had 30 to 40 minutes of this special ready to go. Like right afterwards. Yeah. And this time, because of the pandemic, because of all the things we've been through, I, I don't know what material I'm going to be throwing out what there. What that looks like. You know, yeah. what it's going to look like. Um, or even if I, if, even if I want to do another special, I don't know. You know, I, you know, I don't know if you remember this, but before we filmed this one, maybe it was a couple of months ago, you were like, uh, I think my next special, I don't want to talk about wife stuff at all like I just want it to be something completely different which I was like shocked to hear well I mean you know because I am I do have the ability to be silly on stage and do silly material and and you know and I've never I have all this silly material that I play with uh -huh. you know and that I've never filmed oh know? that's right um, we talk about the backpack joke the backpack the jo you know, joke yeah, yeah there's a bunch of stuff that, that I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm silly with I forgot about um this. But, but also, you know, I'd also maybe do a special where I just talk about raising kids, you know, just talk about, you know, the funny things that Garrett does, the funny things that me and you deal with, with Delilah. Right. Right. All, so maybe the next special is, uh, focused just on how to raise my kids. Right. So I, I don't know. I yeah. mean, I, I'm, I'm literally at a point in my career and my life, um, with stand up that I, I just don't know. Does that still scare you? I know in the past you used to be like, you used to get stressed cause you were like, Oh shit, what am I going to talk about now? Now that I've filmed this, what am I going to talk about now? Do you oh, still yeah. have that I, I'm, anxiety? I'm, of course, you know, yeah. because I, I'm, I'm so in love with all the family that we've, we've created, you know, all the people that, that come out to the shows and support and, and come out for a good time. And I'm so concerned that I want to give them a new story. Right. I want to give them the new material, you know, yeah. and, and, 
you know, I'm not a, I'm not a musician, right? I can't walk on stage, you know, and, and that's what drives me crazy is the fact that, you know, fans go, well, is it going to be the same stuff? It's like, do, do you call Metallica? <laughs> And not to compare myself to Metallica, that's a dumb thing to compare myself to because they're freaking legendary and I'm just freaking Steve Trevino. But um, so I am aware. I don't want you people to jump in and be like Steve Metallica. I'm just saying, do you call little Joe and go, oh, my God, we got to hear the same stuff. You know what I mean? So it, it is frustrating that, hey, man, you know, musicians, you know, they don't write a whole new hour for you to watch. As a matter of fact, if they did, you'd be upset. Right, right, right. right. No, nobody wants to see Aerosmith and see his new album. <laughs> right? How mad would you be if you went to see Aerosmith and, and he's he doesn't like, play crying or crazy? I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I want to yeah. hear the hits. Um, but no, there is definitely um, a pressure, and and it, you know, I, I do have this sense of relief, and you know, I hope that that people like it. I hope that people put it oh, out there. They're gonna, because it's gonna look so beautiful. I can't wait for you to. Because I See really did, I, I, we really put our heart and soul into, um, I mean, camera guy, Terry had surgery a week ago and insisted oh, and he on showed being up. there. He was like, Nope, I'm going to be there. Terry's I mean, awesome. And, and Terry always looks like the, the cool grandpa, right? He looks yeah. like uh Chris Christopherson a little bit with the, with the white hair and <laughs> the, the beard. He's the cool grandpa. Right. Yeah. Um, but we, we hope you like it and, and, you know, hopefully we will find a home for it. So that you guys can can watch it. I know people are already asking me, like, when's the release date? When is it coming out? And we, you know, we don't know all those details just yet, but we'll definitely keep you posted. We don't know, um, but I will say that there is no quit in me, and there is no no to me. We will find a way to make sure that we we get this material out there for the people that care. Yeah, you know, for the people that that want to see it, the people that the, the TikTokers. I'm having so much fun watching all the TikTok, you know, yeah. and, and now I, yeah, I do a bit and I'm like, I wonder if that's TikTokable. <laughs> I think that's very TikTokable. Um, but we did sell some, we did sell some coffee. So thank you guys so much, um, for, for selling that coffee. Old um, salt. Old Can salt. Yeah. It's it? right there. Uh, old salt. Um, yes. Oh my God. You're yeah. not, um, old salt coffee.com. Go check them out. Put in Trevino 10 and get yourself some coffee. And, and, and again, you know, I, I really get my feelings hurt when, you know, we had a comment where somebody said, oh my God, so many sponsors, they're turning into, they're, they're so Hollywood. We are the farthest fucking thing from yeah. Hollywood. No, but it takes stuff to make, to make this keep right. going. And, and we, it's we, a team. It's not just you and I sitting down at a table yes. and record. We want to continue to do the podcast. Yes. We want to continue to be able to tell jokes for a living. And in order to do that, we need sponsors. And we gotta I gotta pay the light bill. And, and I, I <laughs> yes, and I ask you guys to be patient with us. And I ask you guys to not only be patient with us, but be be happy for us because we have Aztec Chevrolet, because we have old salt coffee, you know. Yeah. Please, um, because it does hurt my feelings and it does it does get me angry because if you only knew how un Hollywood we were you would understand that we're doing this on our own, man. And don't get me wrong. I hope Hollywood calls. I hope we, we end up on a whole nother level, right? Yeah. So that we can share what we do with the world, you know? Yeah. Um, but until then, we have you. And we're so happy to have you. And we couldn't do this without you. And, and we want you to know that no matter what, we will never forget where we come from. And we will never forget you. With that being said, Renee has some stuff to say. with that being said... People know people have been asking about my Captain Evil cup. So they are, we are selling them, but it's a handmade item. So there's only a couple. So we're going to take pre-sale orders, but look, how cute is this? There's even like a mini Captain Evil one and it's a sippy cup, but also doubles as a wine cup because you can swap out the lid and then it's just a good old fashioned wine it's cup. It's not old fashioned. That's a good old modern wine cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but where are you going to take the orders? So they have to send me a direct message because, like I said, it's a handmade item. So she can only make so many. We can only do so many at a time. So um, DM Renee at I. It, this is awesome. I <laughs> am Renee. And that is spelled R-E-N-A-E <laughs> with an A. I am Renee <laughs> with an A because that's easy to follow but send her a DM um, and you know what an episode you know 
that we had today. And, and we just ask that you share and, and remember that, that we are not big time. You know, we need your help. We need you to share. We need you to like, we need you to, to rate the podcast. We need you um, to let other people know how much you enjoy the podcast. And we so. saw, I mean, there's so many people who are literally tuning in every week. We saw them in Waco. They came and said, hello. They there's, we see the people who are commenting every week. So now we just got to share it. Yes, please. Share it, share so it. I am Steve Trevino and that is my beautiful wife. You look fantastic, honey. Thank you. I love you. Bye-bye.